The focus of chapter one really deals with this idea of whole numbers and how to deal with them. And a big portion of what we are going to look at today has to do with using the basic operations with whole numbers. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide, as well as being able to round, use order of operations. So that's going to be kind of our focus today. So first of all, you'll notice in the problem that I have here, the adding problems are already lined up. And when we're talking about lined up, we're talking about the fact that there seems to be columns that line up from the right. And I can see these columns and things are lined up. Now, if you're someone who has a hard time lining stuff up, this would be a chapter where I would encourage you to go out and get some kind of a notebook or uh, graph paper that you can use on a regular basis. But if I were just going to solve this, I go to the farthest right column and start there. So 9 and 7 together would be 16. So 6, carry your 1. 6 and 2 would be 8, plus 1 would be 9. 9 and 9 would be 18. So I'm going to write down my 8, and I'm going to carry my 1. And then 9 and 9 would be 18, plus that 1 would be 19. Now, several times students will ask me in this section, oh, shouldn't I put a comma in this spot? And my answer is, yes, yeah, you can put a comma there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, commas were really, I think, created to help us keep things lined up and to know that every three place values, there kind of has a change in what things look like. The first three kind of do hundreds, tens, and ones, and then the next three are thousands, then the next three are millions, then the next three are trillions. So they kind of help us keep things lined up. Please be careful if you choose to use commas, because if your font is very small on your computer, if you go to put a comma here, it could actually look like you know, a comma and be a decimal point depending on how small your font is. So please be careful with that. Okay, now subtraction, we do the same kind of thing. You're looking to make sure that things are lined up and they need to, stand, to start being lined up by this furthest one to the right. So if I go to get this lined up, 8 minus 7 is 1. Then if I go to do 3 minus 1, there isn't enough there to take the 3 away. So this is a borrowing situation. So if I borrow, the 7 is going to become a 6, and that's going to become a 1. Now that 1 on there, it's really important for us to know that that 1 actually means that it's going to stand for 11. So 11 minus 3 is 8 and then 6 minus 4 is 2. Now I will tell you, when you're doing these problems, being able to go back and kind of double check yourself is going to be really important here. So if I were to double check myself, if I should take these two numbers and add them back together, I should get 718. That's called validation. It's doing the opposite operation to check. And since this is a subtraction problem to begin with, addition would be the way for us to check that. So that means if I were to take my 2881 and my 437, I should be able to add these together. And the number here I should get should be the same as the one I started with. So that should be a way, anytime you do a borrowing problem, I would be sure to add it back together to make sure you end up kind of where you started. Otherwise, you could not catch your error and you wouldn't necessarily know you did something wrong. Okay, next one. I wanted to give you one that had lots of zeros here because as soon as I see lots of zeros in the top and know there are, are several that are non-zero in the bottom, that means I'm going to have several places where I'm going to have to do some kind of borrowing. So if I do this, remember how we ta start with this furthest column to the right. Zero minus zero is zero. Now that's not necessarily an issue. This is where our problem starts because I don't have anything to take the 2 away from, the 6, or the 4. So really, if I went to borrow, normally I go to the column before her, but there's nothing there. There's nothing before this. So I have to go all the way here. So this 9 would have to become an 8, and this would become a 10, which is great for the 4, but the 6 and the 2 still need some help. So we're going to have to keep our borrowing going. So now this is going to become a 9, and that becomes a 10. That's good. We've got the 6 taken care of, but the 2 isn't. So this will become a 9, and this becomes a 10. 
So 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 6 is 3. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 8 minus 7 is 1. So I have an answer of 1, 15,380. Now remember, if this is borrowing, which this one was, then I would go off on the side and make sure if I take the answer that I got and what I subtracted, and if I add those together, I should end up with that 90,000. If I don't, I need to go back to my problem, figure out what I did wrong, so I can fix it. But these two should match when you're done. If they don't, go back and figure out what you did wrong. A lot of times it's not borrowing correctly, so keep that in mind. Okay, now in multiplying. In these problems, we start out multiplying. Notice everything's lined up all the way to the right. The digit, the second number here has the least amount of digits to it. This one has two digits and this one has three. Our normal mode of operation here is that this should have the least amount of digits if you're going to multiply it by. Or they should at least be equal at the very least. So when I start here this starts with the six multiplying by everything that's up there. So if I do this six times nine is 54 so four carrier five. 6 times 6 is 36, plus that 5 would be 41, so 1, carry your 4. 6 times 6 is 36, plus that 4 would be 40. Now, some people really have a hard time once they go through and they have a two-digit number here. So this 6, we've got to multiply by everything. Once you're done, I would get rid of these things that you had as carryover. It's very common for people to accidentally use them again, even if they don't mean to, which will kind of be a problem. Now we're going to start with the 6 here, and we're going to multiply it by everything that's up here. So first of all, this 6 that we're using is a digit over. So don't forget to add your 0 as a placeholder. 6 times 9 is 54. So 4, carry your 5. 6 times 6 is 36, plus that 5 is 41. So 1, carry your 4. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 4 would be 40. Now again, we've talked a lot about lining stuff up. This will be the kiss of death in this section if you don't keep your stuff lined up. So make sure you actually have columns here that you can see pretty easily to add together. So 4 and 0 is 4, 1 and 4 is 5, 0 and 1 is 1, 4 and f 0 is 4, and then this 4. So our answer is going to be 44,154. Okay, next one. Now we're going to get into dividing. And some people really have a hard time remembering how to do these, so I want to give you a little clue. Inside out. Um, I, first of all, any number that appears here in front of the division sign is going to be considered an inside number. The number that comes after it is going to be considered an outside number. And really that inside or outside has to do with this division bar. So 297. And this is 53. So the inside out tells you that this number goes in the inside here, and this one goes in the outside. So to begin to, to go through and actually divide this, I have to think about how many times can 53 go into 297 without going over. So the closest that I can get on this one, I think, is 5. So let's see, 53 times 5. Is 265. That's probably as close as I can get without going over. So if I put 265 underneath this, remember the 5 goes over the last digit that was used, and since this number was 297, this, the 5 went over that number. When I go to subtract this, I have 32 left over. Now remember, our left over here has to be smaller than what we divided by. So 32 is smaller than 53, so that's good. 
But normally when you see these answers, when you go to put them in Blackboard, you're going to see a box, then the letter R in the box. That R stands for remainder. So our remainder in this problem was actually 32. And then our number in front would be 5. Now remember, this remainder has to be smaller than this. If, for some reason when you do this, this number is not smaller than this 53, that, no, that means that it could have gone in at least one more time. So please be aware that when you do that, you actually pay attention to that piece. Okay, let's try the next one. Now this division problem is already set up for us. If I would have saw this in our page like the last one, it would have had to have looked like this. Now, a big part of this one is that I want to see how many times 26 is going to go into this. So I'm actually going to go through and set up this problem a little differently. Because there's a lot going on here, and it's much easier to look at kind of a digit at a time. So first of all, 26 does not go into 6, so I'm going to put a 0 there. 26 would go into 63, I would say twice. Let's see. Fifty-two, that's as close as I can get without getting it going over. So fifty-two. And then if I take this away, I would have eleven left over. My remainder has to be smaller than twenty-six, and it is. Now the only thing that's different about this problem and the last problem is there are more digits here to deal with. So what's going to happen is I'm going to move my screen over one. I'm going to bring my five down. So 26 would go into 115, I want to say four times. Did you notice I've been multiplying down the side here? That's a really good technique to make sure that you're getting all your stuff together. You might need to use these again. So to have them all in one place and all your stuff together is going to be a good organizational tool. Now 104 is probably as close as I'm going to get without going over that. So that means it goes in there four times. 104. And if I subtract, I will have 11 left over. Again, my remainder is smaller than the number I divided in by. Okay, last one. I say last one because I only have a 7 left to bring down. There's nothing else left in this corner spot. So 26 will go into 117 four times. It's still not going to be able to go in any more than it did the last time. But this time I will have 13 left over. Again, 13 is smaller than 26. That's good. So when I go to fill in my things, remember how you'll have the two boxes here with your R for remainder in between. So if I look at this, my remainder was 13 down here. That's your remainder box. This number up here, this 244 is going to go here. So when you set this up, remember this number up here is going to be the one that goes in this box. And this part down here is going to be what goes in the remainder. Now, I will just tell you a couple things that you may or may not have noticed. There was a zero that was here with this 240, 244. Did you notice I didn't put that in the box? It's because even though there was a zero there, it wasn't considered to be a significant value. Okay, so it's not a significant value if that number up there isn't going to change the value of what's going on. So you can drop that. So remember, division, big thing is get your stuff lined up. Again, can you see how much easier this would be if you had graph paper behind you if you're someone who has a hard time with that? So just some things to consider.